All right, welcome to another episode of Born to Rome. Oh, I don't me. actually know which one it is. Uh, 13, 13, 13. Look at number 13. 14, maybe. I don't know. We're in the teens. We're in the yeah. teens. Could be seven. We don't know. But anyways. It's not the first one. Not the first one, but it is the second one with Kyle. So welcome on to the podcast, Kyle. How's hey. it going? Oh, it's great. It's great. Just wondering why I, I, it took so long for me to get back when I <laughs> see you every day. <laughs> well, we've been over this, Kyle. There's, there's you know, I, yeah, <laughs> you know, I'll send you an email about it, but uh, I know we've had our problems. I know yeah. it's been a hard year, <laughs> a couple years. <laughs> we have nothing to talk about. That's why we haven't had you back, Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, I have nothing prepared for today. I guess I could ask you first off, Kyle, how's it going? Uh, you know, it's good. It's good. Uh, had some nice lunch today. I didn't have a good sleep last night. No good sleep? No. Too much caffeine? Maybe, but... How many coffees you put I in the way each hash time? hash last night, and I just thought it would put me down, and it, it didn't. Hash and ha- hashish. Hashish. The boys on the yeah. hashish. I want a hashish. Yeah. Hash and coffee, eh? Well, yeah, I had the coffee earlier in the day. But, if you uh, had to say, how many... What did I even do last night? Oh, yeah, how many cups rafters. of brown are you putting down a day? Oh, it depends. It's a lot right now. I'm back up to my pre-pandemic levels. What kind of numbers you putting on the board there, Kyle? I can do like three. I do like three or four. Three or four a day. Yeah. Son. You making those coffees yourself? Or you buying those? It's a, it's a mixture. It depends on the day. I have less when I'm just at home, but sometimes, you know, you're out and about. You're going to grab a quick one. Mm-hmm. No, I used to buy a lot more coffee. It was bad. I, well, yeah, I used to go like when I was bored, when we'd be home from tour, I used to just go. I would either go to Smalls or Red Church or Mulberry first and I would like buy a coffee like an Americano and drink it and walk around and then just go to the other coffee place I didn't go to and get another one then walk around and then like re- repeat that like two or three times a day. Yeah. Yeah, I like to think we kept those places in business. I mean, I, I, I'm i more of a cheap white white trash coffee coffee guy myself i'm more of a you know hazelnut flavor gas station coffee guy but you like nice coffee yeah though, right? i got that champagne taste i'm still waiting on the champagne budget but mm-hmm. any day da- any, any day, day now, now brother. Any, any day, day now those cryptos will cash mm-hmm. those nfts will take me yeah all those chimps that you invested <laughs> in yeah yeah, I got a different. I, I I got a different kind. I got a different brand of chimp, but I hope it takes off. Bad news, brother. I've been screenshotting <laughs> and sending them all around, dude. Yeah, everybody yeah. owns that chimp. Oh fuck. Anyways, so how have you been occupying your time recently? I mean, we've been making, we've been playing music a lot. That's been that's been fun. Yeah, we've been cooking some shit up. We've been cooking it up, people. So you know, get ready, get ready, get ready for the event of your lifetime. I can't say when it's going to happen, but anyways, uh, what have I been doing? Oh, just, uh, taking lots of photos, trying to, I've been buying lots of cameras recently. I got to take a time out on that. It's getting a little out of hand. I bought like four cameras this month. Gear acquisition, mm-hmm. GAS, gear good acquisition deal, syndrome. I, I just cruise in marketplace, finding cameras for 20 bucks that are worth a lot more than that. Flipping God. cameras. No, I'm not flipping them. I might later, but they're to, they're to use for the time being. But we'll see. I kind of want to get into fixing them, I think. So I'm going to order some tools. Start fixing cameras. Yeah, see if I can. We'll see. There's like manuals online and like instructions and tips. So that's cool. That yeah, could be fun. I just figured I spent like little to no money on some of these and they seem like easy fixes. It's like tedious work from the looks of it. It's all small pieces and you need some specific tools, especially yeah. when handling like the lenses and stuff. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I think it'd be a fun little 
Need hobby to chip away at. Something to do. Something to do. Keep you out of trouble. Yeah, exactly. Keep me from keep you playing off. Call of Duty for 8,000 years. Keep you off the pipe. <laughs> yeah, keep me off the pipe. <laughs> <laughs> keep me off the fork. Yeah. Um, I, uh, yeah. I smoke hash like an idiot. I stick it on a fork and I light it on fire. <laughs> I just suck it in. <laughs> um... <laughs> You know what? <laughs> <laughs> um, it's the expose today. Yeah. So I'm not sure where to go from there on the subject of hash. I mean, what to you is the difference between hash and weed? Let me ask you that. Uh Oh, yeah. You get way less in your head on hash. I think I just kind of... What's well, a body thing, right? I mean, that's what they always tell you. It's body high. It's body high. It's body high, bro. Yeah. I don't know what that means. Other than like you're humming. You're humming. But I don't know. It's nice. It's not as intense as weed. This hash anyway. What even is hash? Like, is it all like the THC? Is it like all the crystals? And you grant like, what is it? It's like a putty. I always feel like I'm handling C4. As far as I know what C4 looks like in a film. Like, I don't know what it's like mm-hmm. in real life. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure that like it's like when you fucking like when you're handling the bud, like, yeah. All the crystals and shit that are left on your hands, you just kind of keep compressing them. But I have nothing to base this on. I could be completely off the mark. I'm sure someone's gonna listen to this and be very upset with my explanation of what it is. Yeah, I could we could Google it, but I'm gonna leave it up to you guys. To you let us know. It's mysterious. I don't know. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um. So weed's legal. That's sick. Mm-hmm. Um. Mm-hmm. What else? <laughs> mm-hmm. What uh, what what are your Toronto Raptors up to these days? How are they doing? Eight game win streak. Eight game win streak. Right, Mitch. Yeah, eight game win streak. Sla- cool. Sloppy one last night, but it's still fine. Uh, it's fun. They've been doing great. I That's love the good. team. That's great. Loving loving Gary. Keep my Gary going. Have your wounds healed from losing Kawhi? Yeah, I mean, I don't know, whatever. He's not playing right now. He's injured. He's fine. He can do what he wants. Yeah. I like the team. It'd been cool if you stayed, but I like the team. I like the team right now. They're really fun to watch. Good. I feel like that's like all you say, all people say, though. But like teams like, you know, they're not like they're not going to make it to the finals, probably. If I'm being realistic. But it's like always like that's how you keep yourself in it. It's like anything else. It's like your own little motivation. It's fun to watch though. They're fun. They're a fun team to watch. Fun team to watch. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a child. It's like kids running around on soccer. Like no one's. They're not putting it in the net. It's different though. I guess. Never mind. This bad analogy. I'm going to stop right there. Um. So let's take it back. I'm talking going back, like way back. Um, you know, I think in the first Born to Rome that you and I did was in Adam's shed. We were talking about getting into music and stuff. Yeah, that's when we were <clears throat> doing pre-pro for fuck art. For fuck art. Yeah, we're getting that yes, shit ready to go. Soon to be award-winning fuck art, yeah. yeah. No, it's always award-winning in my heart. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, we got a furry guest. Yeah, just uh, do not <laughs> adjust your screens. That is indeed a cat. This is not... Uh, my cat uh we're looking after this cat his name is rusty uh i'm not really much of a cat person but this guy's really winning me over he's a nice dude rusty yeah he's a good fluff boy the garfield the cats like uh or only orange cats like lasagna but they really like it eh mm-hmm. i've heard that i don't know where i've read that but uh Anyway, so like, let's talk about uh, let's talk about like playing music in Dundas when we were children. So I guess, uh, you know, it's funny. Like at this point in our career, still have a hard time uh, thinking about that concept. But like, uh, you know, it's always like, well, we're gonna do this next. We're gonna try and sell that place out next. But like at a certain point, our like going to play a show in Hamilton, which is literally 10 minutes away from Dundas, was like going to the moon. It was like going to go play at Madison Square Garden. Remember that? Remember when like getting a show in Hamilton was like the biggest deal ever? Yeah. I remember being like, you got to email this guy, Brody, and then you get a show that way. And then that's what we did. Mm -hmm. Our first show was at the Underground when he was still booking there, right? Yeah. 
to like no one. We, well, we brought all our friends out and then they made us go on last. And so all of our 17 year old friends had to wait around till like midnight on like a fucking Wednesday night because all these other bands didn't bring out anybody. Yeah. But they wanted our fans to watch them. Yeah. And uh, they did kind of, they kind of sat in the corner with their arms crossed waiting for us to go on. It was a long night. It was uh, our introduction to the lovely world of Hurry Up and Wait. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. We were stoked. Oh, yeah. That's back when I I would wear the dumbest shit when we played shows. Yeah, you've worn some some doozies, eh? Some heinous attire. Yeah. A couple of fucking headlamps on your head, A couple of headlamps on my head, fake glasses for no reason. I wore. Uh, I remember I wore tights and like gym shorts and the singlet from like my singlet from track to track mm-hmm, team that. Yeah. with a headband. I did wear a lay with a hat on it, mm-hmm. like lay hat. Uh, we we're figuring it out. We're figuring it out. I that was around the time that I was flying a fucking like Soviet flag on my amps and. There's some Eastern European people that were particularly bummed about that choice of decor from me, but, uh, you know. Yeah, and you're just kidding. Like, I don't know, man. It looks cool. I don't get it. Viva la revolution. <laughs> and then you read uh, that now. now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now you're like, oh, wait. Okay, I understand. Now I get it. Um, <laughs> but uh, no, I uh, didn't quite get it then. Um, yeah, so anyways... Most of the shows that we played in the early days were like church battle of the bands, though. Those were real fun because, I mean, they mixed like there was far less artistry uh, happening and more. it was more of like a pure competition. And there was a lot of things that other bands did that was like, oh, they're fucking cheating, man. They're cheating. Um, I that remember happened? one band... That one who, who shall was not... cheating? What? Who was cheating? What was considered cheating back then? I remember like, it was like when they just played like covers. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, that was cheating. Some bands weren't doing that, you know? Right. Like, they didn't have, like, you mean when they showed up and they didn't have any music. They just played the covers straight yeah. outright. Remember that band, Funk in the Oven, that we played at, with La- at Laurier? Oh, yeah. And they won the whole, they yeah, won yeah. that Battle of the Bands? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, now I remember yeah, yeah, I remember and they that. just played covers. I was so bummed. Marco, uh, was the guy's name again? No, I think his name is Marco. Super nice guy. We're, we're, we're friends now, but I remember being bummed, being like, these guys uh, are just playing like Marvin Gaye songs. Yeah, we're like, fuck that. Yeah. I just poured my heart and soul yeah. out on the table, and you yeah. guys got up there and did some, some you grooved along to yeah. fucking, you guys played super superstitious. Probably probably but there was deep deep you know competition happening at these things like it was like oh i don't think oh they're gonna win they're oh they're not gonna win there's no way they're gonna win yeah. you know it was funny it was Fucking like the pussies. it was like it was like, <laughs> <laughs> it was it was like so he said it that's what he said in high school i don't know um yeah these battles battles of the bands um i don't even remember what the prizes that they were giving out were they weren't it wasn't really much it was like you get seven minutes of recording time at this guy's basement studio <laughs> yeah, you can go record with you can go record uh, with with jason down at uh, gold gold sound records and yeah. uh, uh they'll, they, they'll tell you they'll tell you everything to do wrong in the music industry probably and they'll try and tell you They'll try and change everything about you and give you bad advice, and you just got to run away. Yeah, I mean, that was it in a nutshell. And then we kind of graduated out of that and started playing more like high-level high, high level battles battles of the bands, like the ones that I was just talking about with the uh, funk in the oven. And the what was it? Bodog Battle, battle of the Bands or Rockstar Supernova Battle Bodog. of the Bands? <laughs> you know what I'm fucking talking about though, right? Like yeah. I remember we played these battle battle of the band the one when we played in like the summer of two thousand and eight and we're still a two piece. Oh yeah, the, well the supernova ones, yeah. But fuck that company. Yeah, well, they don't exist we, anymore. We but. fucking won. Like we played second or two piece. Played yeah, second we, at the opera yeah, house. Yeah. Well, I feel like, yeah, but that's just a funny time. That guy clearly didn't want to be there. And he was like, This band is good enough. 
yeah. we were probably better but it was like he was like it's it's 10 o'clock i don't want to be here all night there was like five bands <laughs> left to go on and he just like we were the second band on and he gave us the prize and so so like you we had to sell all these fucking tickets to play this show it's such a goddamn scam sell all these tickets to your friends that are like 40 dollars to come see your band at the opera house and then they're like but here's what you get there's like gonna be like judges from like universal music and sony music and fucking warner music they're all gonna be here and i remember like this guy taking us in the alley after we played he's just like listen i'm gonna tell you straight up you've won already but listen the judges couldn't make it they all got in separate car accidents <laughs> yeah it's a honey pot it's a honey pot scenario they try and like, they try and woo you in with all these promises of grandeur <laughs> and then like they called their buddy Steve in and he shows up and he's like hey guys like I managed the doors he's like hey guys <laughs> it's always like hey guys you know you're pretty good tonight and uh we're going to keep an eye on you uh so you guys will get the prize and uh just uh you just keep at it you just keep you just keep doing it. I got to get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I remember too. But the you guy, have a good night. <laughs> the guy saying to us, he's just like, you know, like one thing that you guys just might want to work on is like make make better songs <laughs> yeah. and play them better. <laughs> yeah, that's always like, you know, you're gonna get place for real advice. Well, I mean, yeah, sometimes sometimes that's true advice. Sometimes I mean, you do have. That's really the problem with that is you do have to make good music. Yeah. Well. But, I'd say the funny thing about that evening was um, there's several funny things that stick out in my mind still about that that night. But one of them was that my amp was picking up all these radio signals. And so I couldn't stop that from happening. So I started swearing and my parents were in the audience. They're like, never swear on stage again. And then from that day forth, I just sweared constantly on stage. It kind of started a tick in my brain. Um, but then also like when that guy gave us the prize thing, like there was like seven more bands that were supposed to play that, that, that were like still going to play that night. And little did they know that there was no more prize. Yeah. <laughs> like, and then we went and recorded, uh, uh in Uxbridge at, uh, we got a day that, uh, at rush recorded silver or something. or something. It's still a place. Chalet. No chalet studios or whatever. Yeah. Sounds familiar. Yeah. And we recorded a song that probably never see the light of day. Maybe we'll throw it on the Patreon. Maybe the Patreon, but it's there. Yeah. Remember we recorded it that day and ripped and did a radio interview with Rick Taylor and we're like, put this on. I remember recording it that day and being like, I don't want to be a two piece anymore. <laughs> 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 this fucking sucks. This is way too much responsibility. Um, but yeah, it was right around that time. You're we like, I don't think we should do this anymore yeah. this way. I think we should modify this whole fucking I think we need another sound perhaps something in the low end hmm. yeah but uh i also remember for that battle of the bands that we went into toronto like hilariously early yeah i think we went for like noon and we parked in the east end by the opera house where it was and we walked like all the way to like queen and spadina mm -hmm. and walked all the way back yeah I don't even know how we managed to do that because we didn't have phones at the time. We didn't know what we were doing. MapQuest. That was our first show in Toronto though, right? Yeah, I guess it was. It was. Yeah, it would have been. That was like going to like Japan. Yeah, I kind of forget that it was sometimes because I, I had in my head have like more important ones in my mind. Like yeah. sometimes that one's just so far back. That I Such a bogus show, too. Like, yeah, it was weird. I remember the guy who was also booking it, like, booked... Like, I think he also booked, like, burlesque shows and shit. Like, he wasn't necessarily, like, purely a music promoter. I remember the tickets were also sparkly. Like, they had, like, glitter and shit on them. Mm -hmm. like, Anyways, don't fall for those traps. Yeah, that's... And the moral of the story is never do shows where like the promoters like okay well in order to play this show you have to sell 30 tickets to your friends like yeah. and if you want to win you got to sell 100 yeah that's a fucking racket don't do that cuz what you're ultimately doing is making money for some fucking chain smoking guy in a leather jacket that drives around in a fucking 
Pontiac Sunfire who's never going to pay you a cent anyways. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyways, yeah, don't pay to play, kids. Don't play to don't pay to play. That's yeah. what I'm that's what we're telling you. Don't play to be paid. Yeah. That's I mean those certainly resonate in my mind. Those stupid ass early shows. My god. Mm-hmm. I don't I don't ever see this stuff advertised anymore. Maybe we're like not kind of in those positions where that's what we're like looking at but i don't ever really i've never i haven't heard of a battle bands in a no. while i mean even prior to the pandemic i mean like do people just still do them i'm sure they do like but i think like yeah. the predatory ones seem to have gone away like the predatory battle of the bands battles of the bands uh were a big thing around that era but i don't see them anymore i think they kind of collapsed yeah, maybe they should fight to the death now. Yeah, it's purest form of sport. I think the 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 like the whole predatory thing has shifted to like hustling bands online and like you know paying for you know streams or whatever. I think it's probably I don't know if I had to say that's probably where it's gone. Yeah, don't pay for shit. You no. can do it on your own, most likely at the start. You'll know when you need help from people that aren't you but take people's advice unless it's given to you by a chain smoking guy in a leather jacket driving around in a Pontiac on fire <laughs> yeah, yeah don't listen to those guys that specific guy <laughs> yeah he does not have your best interest at heart I promise yeah oh man Rusty what's going on bro look at that look at that it's a beautiful cat look at that <laughs> Yeah, he's, I want that life. He's got some some slightly googly eyes, may I add, too. Don't we all just want that life? So, Kyle, are wow. you, like, on a scale of 1 to 10, how much of, like, a Telemore fan are you these days? I haven't watched any of that. You haven't watched you any of that You and Sam shit? are going nuts, and I, haven't, I still just kind of forget that it's a thing. I'm a big Telemore guy these I was, days. Sam and I had a big... 9-11, 9-11 day yesterday. Rusty likes it when I sing, apparently. He's a conspiracy cat. He's like, oh, tell me more about it. Fire's uh, not enough. That's a good song. That's a good song. It's mm-hmm. too long. They should got, they got to cut that song down a bit. Distill it to its essentials, but it's a good song. What's that guy's name again? I can't remember. It's like Mike something. Anyway, certified banger. Yeah. Classic. Thanks, Catatonic Youths. Thanks for showing us real the real music. I kind of had to start like f- listening to like going out of my way to listen to more new music because I realized that most of the new music that I was listening to was just like cynical, like you know, Catatonic Youth shit. That Martin Noakes. Oh, Martin Noakes, close. Martin Noakes okay. is the gentleman's name. That's Martin uh, Noakes. That the song one. is called. 9-11, building seven. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but yeah, as I said, I was listening to all these goddamn, like just watching Catatonic Youths. That's how I was listening to all the new music. Yeah. <laughs> just all really, really bad super cuts of, of bad music. And I was like, I should probably start finding some good new music. So what have you found? Um, in the last couple of weeks, not... Not even like a few things. I'm like, this is cool. This is cool, but nothing that's really gotten me going too hard, to be honest with you. Nice. I mean, I think I've also like fucked my algorithm on my various streaming services because I've just like, I'll leave it on Mm -hmm. and just kind of going. And so, like, I don't need to hear all these like super deep cut songs that it keeps giving me i'm like these are deep cuts for a reason because they're not fucking bangers but that's all it gives me these deep cut tunes by like a G- like people that i like that is, I, don't, I don't need to hear this song you know people with like huge bodies of work like oh yeah i know what you mean i put on random like i don't need to hear any fucking 90s dylan like what is this this is <laughs> who needs that i wasn't i didn't ask for this no one asked for this uh-uh. bob or like every time like on Spotify, like the release radar, it's like another new version of fucking Don't Let Me Down by like on the on the rooftop, the seventh time they played it. I get the point. I watched the show. 
I watched the. It was great. I saw it. I heard it. It's great, but it's so funny. I that should when, not qualify as a new release. <laughs> yeah, just give me an ongoing loop of Paul McCartney saying "fuck face." I'll take it. I'll have that, or that he's gonna put he's gonna put Linda McCartney's daughter in a box. Yeah, yeah. I really enjoyed that documentary. Yeah, whoever's daughter that was. It's funny. Is That's it Linda's him? daughter, yeah. Right. right. She had a kid before they were together. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. So funny. Paul's style's pretty on point during that. Dude, all of them. Except George has some wacky moments where you're like, ah, that was a stretch. George just kind of constantly looks like an exotic bird, which mm-hmm. is cool, but mm-hmm. Paul's got a sick vibe. He's doing so does John. Thing. Ringo's cool too. I mean, like, I was kind of fucking, as I said before, like, I was like, how do they have so much goddamn energy? I was like, oh, yeah, speed. They're taking speed all the time. I was like, man, I should take speed all the time. Probably not, though. Yeah, and that's the claim we're making. And if you want to refute it, Sir Paul McCartney, then you can come on down and you can sit right here and tell us all about. Yeah, come sit here, dude. Come tell us all about those days. And you tell me to my face that you never did drugs like that. I don't think you can do that. I don't think you can do it. Um, the other thing that, you know, I think a lot of people have theorized about that. I, I still am curious about is what is that mysterious, mostly opaque, uh, yellow liquid that Paul McCartney seems to be drinking. Dude, they're just drinking Mountain Dew. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's like they're, they 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 are getting the first the, that sweet taste mm. that product reveal. George Martin just brewing it back. Oh, actually, now I have to know when did Mountain Dew come out? I'm gonna say 1972. Mountain Dew. Mountain Dew came out. Ooh, introduced in 1940. Jeez, way off. Maybe they were drinking Mellow Yellow. No, that was 79. I liked Mellow Yellow. I think my dad made me drink it because Kyle Petty was sponsored by it. My <laughs> namesake. <laughs> get this in your We son. go on trips to the U.S. and get it. Get it. Get that. Get illegal satellite dishes. Don't come for my family. <laughs> <laughs> the crimes that you committed against yeah. HBO in the late, ni- late 90s or 2000s. Don't come for my family. Was pretty tight. Yeah, my my uh, my my folks were too Johnny Law to be pulling any fucking any moves like that. We just had to sit through, you know, cut up versions of of uh, Forrest Gump, like edited down versions of Forrest Gump on TBS. What else are you up to these days, Kyle? What's the uh, what's the good word? You've been, uh, okay. you've been taking a lot of photos. Yeah, taking some photos, working on a nil related project. Watching terrible movies, mm-hmm. The Avenging Force, ten out of ten. Willy's Wonderland, like two out of ten. Yeah, not good. Uh, saw Red Rocket last weekend. Went to the movies. Went to the keg. Been enjoying our slight gains of freedom. Mm-hmm. Saw new Jackass. A lot of dicks. Yeah, but still sick. Full full frontal entertainment. Yeah, because I felt like, and this is no, I don't care, but like in the old ones, they would like tape their dicks up. Mm-hmm. Feel just like things are loosening, and that's cool. That's a good sign. Mm-hmm. People aren't as worried. Free the hog, eh, bud? Yeah. Uh, oh, fuck. Is there like an H word that rhymes? I just want them to be like alliterative for some reason. No, there isn't. What rhymes with what? Hog? Not like rhymes, but an alliterative to version of free the hog, but I don't think there is. No, I don't know, bud. No, I don't think so. So who's got the best dick on Jackass? <laughs> um, I don't know. <laughs> Steve will look like he had a pretty big dick. <laughs> Not going to lie. Mm-hmm. Uh, so probably him. All right. He said something really profound on a show today when they were talking about mortality. Or no, I don't know when it was. I just saw this clip of him talking about life and like the burden of mortality 
Yeah. And I'd never heard anyone put it that way before. And it made me think differently about a few things, but just how um, basically he was saying like, our only desire, like our only real desire in life is to survive. And our only guarantee in life is that we won't. And like living with that when it can flood you is like very heavy Mm -hmm. and cruel. Yeah. Yeah. Death's wild, dude. Yeah. Fucking A, dude. This whole thing took a downturn. <laughs> no, I just think it's fun. I, I like I just it's fun to talk about for me. Death? I don't know. I just like am interested. It mm-hmm. just like gets my brain all firing when I'm like forced to think about things a little bit differently. Yeah, that we're gonna die. Yeah, yeah, we're all gonna die. That's I mean not me. Nah, you know, not you. I'm gonna upload myself into the metaverse. Not Mark Zuckerberg. That's my <clears throat> thing. I actually thought about this. I think NFTs and the metaverse and all this shit is really just like some rich billionaire ploy now for immortality. Mm. Because they're making it. They're yeah. gonna get their consciousness in there. So all I can think is like, what are Christians gonna think when they realize that their God is just some Mark Zuckerberg motherfucker who just like made their world? And then his big pasty face shows up in the sky and he's like, oh, we fucked, oh, we fucked that up. We're just going to reboot. Just going to reboot it all. Try again. Didn't work. I don't know, man. I don't like all this metaverse stuff. It seems that people do like it, though. Like, it seems like people are longing to escape the fucking, you know, horror of... Uh, physical existence. See, and that's where it comes back Mm -hmm. to mortality. But um, yeah, it's weird. McDonald's is opening up restaurants in the metaverse, I guess. The fuck does that even mean? I don't know. You're going to wear your like metaverse suit TM and then you're going to have like flavored juices shot into your mouth or something and while you eat like a fucking tofu or like square. You're going to eat like a square. Here's your flavor square while you like visualize the sensation that you're eating a burger. Then I wonder, like, it's not going to feel the same. What does it do? Does it morph? I don't know, man. (laughs) Future's going to be wild, and I'm not going to be there. Ted Kaczynski was right, dude. (laughs) Oh, my (laughs) God. (laughs) I'm just... I don't mean that. Um, (laughs) Well, it's all laughs here. Yeah. Anyways, let's steer away from... We're all going to live forever. Don't worry about it. Yeah, it's going to be fine, dude. It's going to be fine. Whatever. Like, you know, you get your, you get your, you get your, you get your life. You get to do what you want with it, hopefully, as much as you can. And then, you know, it's, it's over. Lights out, son. If you don't like what I have to say, we can fight about it one day, fist to fist on the metaverse. Yeah. That's actually one of the new uh, packages on our Patreon is if you pledge a certain amount of money, you get to enter into a prize fight with Kyle. In the metaverse. In the metaverse, yeah. 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 I don't know. I that don't know. could be fun. Imagine you could do that. That if, I think that's the only thing that you can do that's cool in the metaverse. Fight people? It's like fight people, but have like, like give everybody stupid powers and... I guess there's video games that you can do that. There's VR games that you can do that. But if you were like me and fucking like Sean over here, we're uh, we got a bit of a dispute and we're going to go settle this mono e mono in the metaverse mm. at the McDonald's at the McDonald's. <laughs> just like real life. Yeah. Just like real life. I don't know. I don't know where it's all heading guys, but it is, um, but we're making it new music, so it can't be that bad. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, we're we're going to once again, like you know, change the face of of culture as we know it with our music. Yeah, as Kanye West once said, "I'm the nucleus," mm-hmm. or "Yay," or whatever he wants to be called. I tried to watch that Drake Kanye thing on Prime. Uh huh. So fucking boring. What is it? Just them hanging out. It's them like doing that uh, Larry Hoover like benefit concert in L.A. And it's just, all I saw was Kanye's portion. And I was just like, who wants, like, you'd think the spectacle would be cool, but he's just like running around on this big dome thing that I guess looks like he's on the moon. All this like smoke. And I think it's like interesting for about a minute. Yeah. And then you're like, 
It's just him running around on this giant thing in the Los Angeles Coliseum. And it takes like 30 minutes for them to get out because a big choir comes out of the start and they do all these. It's beautiful singing. But again, you're like, this stick could go on for like five minutes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's kind of in an interesting place, eh? Yay. He's uh... In a way, he always has been. I don't know. He just knows how to stay in the news cycle. Certainly does. He knows how to stay relevant and maybe also uh, uh, his struggles really just play out in the public eye. I think he just needs to like make some good fucking music again though. Like it's been, it's been slow. I don't know. I haven't really liked much of anything since uh, uh, the one in 2018. Yeah. Yay. Was it just yay? It was a 2018. Yeah. Game. And again, I think there's a, like there's a couple good ones in there. I think nothing has been as good as Jesus. But that's just me. I really like Ye, but that was, I mean, I just had a good deep dive with it when it came out. It was like a nice, some nice soul samples and shit. It was cool. Yeah, you had to convince me. I was pretty out on Kanye then. Pretty out on him right now, but it's, he's not not interesting. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know. But I mean, he's just one of those guys, one of those people who is just like, I don't want to see any more of this when I open up my stupid fucking cell phone. There's a lot of that going on today. It's just people that just like don't know how to just take a breather and like, can you just not be in the public eye for like a second? Like, or does it always all have to be about what you're doing? We like, I don't care though. Like, I don't know. Like, what would you uh, do if Pete Davidson took your girl? Uh, I'd make a meme about it, brother. Um, I don't know, but uh, <laughs> I don't know. We're so out of our depth right now. Yeah, <laughs> we should. We're the last two people that should be talking about pop culture. But I mean, fuck it. Righteous Gemstones is sick. That's a good oh, yeah. show. Yeah, we have been watching that. Thanks, Mitch. Mm-hmm. Are you all caught up? Oh yeah, you I are. Am. With this, that's why you got me. Oh yeah. Speaking of Righteous Gemstones. Uh, one sec. Kyle's brought a bag of props. Just these. This is what Luke got me for my birthday this year. Oh, you got that? Uh, you got that proper band on it, the high tension one. Yeah, this I broke it instantly, but then Luke got this replacement band for me. Uh, Seems to be pretty sick. I'm pretty excited to use it. I also the previous band was white, and I, I like the orange much better. Mm-hmm. I feel a little more stylish that way. I feel a little more like it's my own. Yeah. So a little bit more of a signature look. So yeah, thanks. And the uh metal balls too. The metal balls. It. This would fuck you right up, I think. Yeah. Well, I told you that there's a hornet's nest down the road that I've been trying to hit with a rock for several months now, but have yet to be able to land one. Yeah. So again, thank you for this. You're very welcome. That's a mature gift for a thirty year old man. Yeah. Um, it was either that or the air rifle, but, uh, you've, you've been known to, uh, shoot people's teeth out with those. That just happened one time. (laughs) Tanner, I still think it was half your fault, man, but (laughs) he moved in front of it. (laughs) He ducked down. I was aiming down, but (laughs) those things were a real fucking problem when they were around. When we were about 17 years old, Kyle and his brother got these like pellet guns that shot airsoft guns, airsoft guns. They shot plastic pellets. And they really dominated the situation for a while. They uh, they were around, and uh, much damage broken. was done with those things. Fuse. Dental damage, uh, doorbell damage, computer uh, screen damage, computer screen damage. Um, well, it's the old saying, emotional damage for sure. That lots of emotional pains. When you've got a hammer, everything looks like a nail, eh, bud? <laughs> <laughs> I guess I've never heard that before. Well, I, m- I remember somebody tried to fucking press the doorbell by shooting it. Yeah. And it blew up the doorbell. Yeah, it broke the doorbell. <laughs> well, yeah, I was like, well, what's, what if we shot that, though? Can we ring the doorbell with it? Yeah. No. Turns out you can't. Yeah, my mom was pretty pissed about that. Yeah. No, those things are a real menace. I remember when I was... 14 years old, I begged my dad so hard 
like it's the point of tears like let me buy myself a fucking paintball gun and he said you're not getting a paintball gun and now being a 30 year old man i'm like dad you made the right call because i would have either gone to juvie i would have damaged my body intensely like my eye socket or something uh some small animal could have been put in harm's way. Like that's what I'm saying. Like when you're 14 and there's nothing like you have no supervision and you have like a, even just kind of like a soft core firearm, like damage will be done. You're not going to use that thing responsibly. There's no way, you know, I'm 30. I still use that shitty responsibly. So, so you got to get yourself a set of divorced parents. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's how you get dangerous <laughs> that's toys. how you get that's how you get the toys you shouldn't have. yeah you need that united front to prevent you from getting it but once it once you don't have that then you can play them off each other get the get the fun toys yeah remember you your brother also had you he had those like really high velocity like nerf arrows as well and yeah hey, those things how oh, he almost broke my arm with that Ryan and, did. Yeah, I remember yeah. he broke it over my arm. He did. He fucking got you good. Uh, he was pissed. I he get it. Pissed. Sorry, Ryan, about that time. Yeah. Um, we're all, we're, he's getting married this summer, so, you know, it's my wild. best man. It's going to be great. You should fucking, like, as he's saying, I do, like, <laughs> sma- <laughs> smash one of those. <laughs> just, or just, like, just get him in the nuts. Yeah. Like, just light him up with a paintball gun. Uh, yeah. that's, that's maybe a little too far, but anyways. That's how we do it in Dundas. Do it when I'm giving Woo! my speech. Just like pull a thing out from underneath the table. And yeah. Just like, <laughs> yeah. Happy marriage. Towel whip him. Yeah. Yeah. Save for the bachelor party. String them up naked in the middle of the night. Yeah. Sounds like Shoot them with paintball guns. <laughs> <laughs> Doing that out in the country. Yeah, I assume. Oh, dude, just right here. Oh, nice. Straight on the street. Nice. For public display. Yeah. Are you going to get him back for the time you smash the bow over your arm? Nah. You let that go? I don't hold grudges here. No. It's family, man. It's blood. Have you ever watched Fast and Furious movie? You know, I've seen, I think, all of them. I don't remember anything from any of them other than the first one, basically. The first one's the only one that's like... Like the all the other ones seem to just be like moving closer and closer to like I don't know. The first one was like we're stealing cars and shit, and like now it's like we're saving the world. Oh, dude! But that's what makes it sick. The first one isn't. I don't think it's as good actually. After watching because of this basketball podcast I listened to, shout out to No Dunks. I. Uh, they did like a summer series where they watched all the Fast and Furious movies. Yeah. Because the new one was coming out, F9. Mm-hmm. So I joined in at Tokyo Drift because I'd always ignored that one. And Tokyo Drift was actually pretty good. And then after that, and like Two Fast, Two Furious is pretty terrible. And I've seen the Fast and the Furious enough times. But then you come in Fast and Furious, the fourth one. It's not very good. But I think Fast Five as a whole for what the series is and has become is the best one and then i've stopped at fast uh, fate of the furious because we saw it in theaters and i couldn't put myself through that again i couldn't put myself through hobbs and shaw again because that movie is fucking so bad (laughs) and i couldn't i didn't want to watch the new one because i was exhausted yeah yeah i don't know family man that's it that's how we got there yeah i uh I don't know. Everyone has their trash movies that they like. That's uh, I have a hard time with those ones. Though. That those ones and the uh, and the Marvel ones. I just uh, I would just I would just rather watch uh, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> just stare at this. <laughs> yeah, just, stare at a white wall. Yeah, that's fair. I'm in um, that. Yeah, I'm on the Marvel train. Mm-hmm. They got me, man. They got you. Yeah, I mean, it's like I. I mean, I'm. Ex- I'll watch the new like Robert Pattinson one, but I guess that's DC. And uh, I don't know. Like I, that's Batman. You're always gonna see Batman. Like they always try to make Batman generally as cool as possible, except for the Zack Snyder stuff. <laughs> and I watched the whole four hour Justice League just because it boggled my mind. It was so bad. Yeah, I don't know. Like, 
I think it's just like part of getting older. But when I was a kid, I kind of saw these movies as like slightly sacred. Like when I went, like it was like, oh man, it's a big deal. But they seem to be just like trowing up the same old fucking ground every goddamn year. And they just have lost all meaning to me. But that's also like part of my, probably my perception of time. Like when they made the first Spider-Man movie, it was like a big deal. But now it's like, how many goddamn Spider-Men have there been? Three. Three? Yeah. Plus a couple animated, animated guys. No Way Home was awesome. I watched a little bit of it. I really enjoyed it. Yeah. I mean, it's... Uh, I think that just like every once in a while, people are like, oh no, you got to see this one. And then I go see it and I'm just like, they're all the fucking same though, bro. See, I, they got me. I'm in. I'm hook, line, and sinker ready to suck the dick of of Marvel Studios for whatever <laughs> product they push out. Whatever they're showing Except, Okay, you. I won't watch The Eternals because I just don't... I read the synopsis and was like, yeah, I don't... I, that's a lot. But maybe I will watch it because I'm kind of a completionist too. Mm. It's like how mm. I play video games and shit. You got to go around. You got to get everything. You got to try to get that 99%. So I feel like... I feel like I've done a big disservice to my to myself. You can watch Eternals one day. What I watched the Shang Chi one or Shang Chi, and it was good. Mm hmm. This is let me guess. Like, uh, there's a guy. And, yeah, uh, there's always a guy. He's he's like he's got powers. Well, sometimes there's a woman. No, he doesn't have powers necessarily. Is he like he's a skilled fighter? He's got to get powers. Okay, so he's get he's gets back powers. from his father. He has a big fight in the middle. He kind of loses. Yeah, but this movie is all about like <laughs> not having, not growing up without a father, like growing up with a shitty father. And it's like that kind of shit. I don't know. It was nice. Mm. The, mm. the lead dude's from Toronto. Cool. That's cool. Yeah. Um, it was quite enjoyable. I don't know. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, not every movie needs to be good. Good fellas. <laughs> <laughs> And no, not every no. Some movies do need to be bad. That's true. Um, yeah, I don't know. Like I, uh, I, I think it's just from, as I said, like the. Uh, I can't. I wish I could like these movies, but I just have no investment when I watch them. I'm just like, I also get distracted by all the shitty CGI, like that. My eyes are just like. I have very little patience with that stuff. Like the, when things are just like, when it's all, you know, uh, computery the whole time. Yeah. No, that's fair. My eyes just like can't focus. But um, that being said, CGI has gone a lot better. I remember seeing the mummy or the scorpion king <laughs> yeah. and it does the N64 graphics. <laughs> yeah. Like the second mummy movie. When what? Yeah, Scorpion's I guess kid. so. Yeah. And the rock like, yeah, not good. Not a big scorpion body. Did you watch Mandy yet? No. Mitch, have you seen Mandy? Uh, Nicholas Cage movie? Like, oh, Mitch, man. pull that up. It's fucking sick. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, I haven't seen it. It's really good. It's really good. Yeah. It's ultra violent and like super like 80s okay. kind of horror movie, supernatural, oh, like B movie type deal. Yeah. It's really well done. Yeah, I keep meaning to watch that one. I keep thinking of all these other Nick Cage movies that we've seen, like Prisoners of the Ghostland is going to be in that vein. Mm. And they're just not, apparently. Um, What movies are you looking forward to that are coming out? Uh, the Batman's going to be sick. That new Alex Garland movie, Men, looks really awesome. Uh, the Northman should be good. Oh, what the fuck else is coming? I really want to see Come On, Come On that came out last year, but... What about Avatar 2 there, bud? Oh, dude, I never saw Avatar 1. When I saw Avatar 1, I was so fucking high in the movie theater that uh, I just fell asleep. <laughs> I just like ate a bag of popcorn and like passed out like uh, when they were talking about unobtainium. Like the sh the, that's the shit that they're mining on the planet. I, know, I just wish I could have picked like another like this, this, like less of an obtuse like name. Like... <laughs> Yeah, it's a dumb, yeah. it's a dumb, dumb movie. That's how, called X. Uh, wait, yeah, it's yeah, super it's long. Fun. I keep trying to think of what the hell I was trying to say. Like exposition as like 
an item. <laughs> Unobtainium. Yeah. That's the best they could do. Yeah. And it's not really a MacGuffin, but it's like kind of a MacGuffin. Yeah. I just wasn't quite feeling it. I was feeling that popcorn though. I'll tell you that much. Um, but yeah. So yeah. Fucking Avatar 2. That's going to be so sick when that comes out. Yeah. And then three and four and five. <laughs> yeah. Great. Um, They're all in production. When's the next Fast and the Furious coming out? Oh, I don't know. It, who knows? There's going to be a 10 maybe to wrap the whole thing up, but The Rock won't come back. So there's almost no point. Did he die? No, room? no. Him and Vin Diesel don't get along. I mean, they're both like bald. Why wouldn't they? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Just because uh, they're just big bald baby man about <laughs> movies. Who's going to be the alpha baby who's man? Gonna be, like, who's who's the fucking candy ass <laughs> yeah. between the two of them? Who's more about family? <laughs> yeah. Uh I don't know. I'm sure there'll be another one, but I actually recommend if you want to see a terrible, enjoyably terrible movie that you watch, Vin Diesel's The Last Witch Hunter. We watched that together. Oh, yeah, we saw that, and yeah. I'm just saying to people. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Like the royal, the audience, um, the listeners. Another movie that I fell asleep during. Yeah. That was, yeah, we watched that on a drive-in on tour in Georgia. Battery died. Battery died. Sold the, sold the guy who boosted the car CD, yeah. though, so I, that was pretty sick. Call that a win. Yeah, that was a win, uh, you know. Uh, and then when you watch Green Inferno, which I remember being a movie, but I remember The Last Witch Hunter a lot more. I remember Green Inferno a lot more. The movie's crazy with the cannibals. Um, the movie was crazy, but I just love Last Witch Hunter because you get to watch Michael. Sorry, you get to watch Vin Diesel call Michael Caine kid for like <laughs> three hours, sick. like an hour, <laughs> because his character is supposed to be thousands of years older than him. I just loved it, kid. Yeah, yeah, Vinny D, just doing it up. Yeah, so what's that? What else is up? I don't know. We got. What's going on here? Well, I was going to ask you, what is the nastiest venue you think we've played? I was just thinking about... Oh, the Milestone Club in Charlotte. <sighs> yeah, what's pretty bad. The one of those classic... Things. Like, I'm sure... I know it's a beloved punk venue, and that's great. I just think it's kind of probably by the time that we got there. It's gone, the end right? Of its tenure. Yeah, it's gone. It was pretty... Di- it was pretty, like, done. I think it's gone. And I just, like, I don't know. I always have a weird time with those clubs where, like, they come and people come up and be like, you know, Nirvana played here. And then you're like, okay, has anyone come because Nirvana played here? Like people go like, I go to that club because Nirvana played here. Nirvana played here 30 years ago. But I think it's cool that they did. Don't it is wrong. sick. Like, don't get me wrong. It is really sick. But that place, it's like. A legacy is important, but it only matters if it's ongoing. Yeah. I mean, that place. Do cool uh, shit always, not just one time. Had black mold like on the walls and shit. Yeah, what else was bad though? There's got to be some pretty rough ones. Isn't what was like one a rough European Mothers one? Tour in Birmingham. That one was really rough. Oh, I think that was just like a space. Art space. Yeah, that one was fucking disgusting. Mm-hmm. That one in Spokane on that tour, I remember being really weird. Yeah, was that like, the one like, with the candle band? Like the folk doom yeah, band? Yeah, doom folk band. They yeah. were weird. Yeah, and then the then the, like the bar cover band that played randomly. Yeah. Like between, it was like no Mars. a doom folk band, like dreads, hippie straight people maybe i don't know that was at least the vibe that they were putting out they had hoods they were like druids yeah and they play it was awful guy was like playing a mandolin really hard a guy was other guy was screaming over top of it it was uh just exactly what it sounds like and then after that dudes in like pastel polos and white like you know like regular wash jeans like luke's here came on stage with like nice hair and played like uptown funk and mm-hmm. and bar covers like that and then we played and then single mothers played and that shit was weird. Yeah. Yeah, that about does that one. Uh what I'm trying to think of like there's been some bad ones on the west coast though. Do you remember the one the one that the first time we played in Vancouver was really funny when everybody smashed the fucking uh, ceiling tiles. Oh, yeah, that's not there anymore. And brass. Yeah, that was. Uh, I think it was called the Electric Owl, and it was in the basement across the street from the Cobalt. 
Yeah, that was a fun one. Yeah. It's always a good time when people start smashing the roof tiles, as long as it's not your venue. Mm-hmm. Good times. Yeah, though I do think, yeah, I do think that the Milestone Club was one of the worst places that we played. I am I understand that there's like punk heritage. <laughs> but uh, Heritage? <laughs> yeah. Punk heritage, but sometimes I just shut up. Yeah. Yeah, that place was definitely uh, a rat hole. Uh, w- w- we played a couple pretty scabby spots too when we did that first tour of the States with Pears and uh, High when we were supposed to play that tour with them, but they couldn't make the dates because their van died. Their big America karate van died. Oh, yeah. And then we played like we played with some real, in some real rough spots. Remember that? Mm-hmm. But I don't remember where, like around New Orleans. Some mm-hmm. grim- no, we played in Nashville and we played in Georgia and we played the New Orleans one was sick. That was a great show. Yeah. Gas a gas. I'd like to play there again. That was dope. And uh, I don't know. We just played some, we just played some art spaces. That's fine. I don't know. We played a lot of, we played a handful of places that are gross. And then uh, our next shows are hometown shows. Our next shows are hometown shows. We're playing at two shows in April, Sun, 15th yeah. and 16th. At the Bridge Orcs. I think they're going to sell out pretty soon if they're not already. Get your um, tickets if you can. Yeah, we're supposed to be on tour right now. But uh, Brian Fallon, Brian Fallon uh, decided to cancel those shows because of COVID. So I hope everyone is doing safe and well. And I hope that they all have fun on the rest of those dates that we are not a part of them and the Warriors gang who I was looking forward to reuniting with. Yeah, we'll have to make that happen again soon. Mm -hmm. What a crazy time though right now, just trying to get plans together with all these cancellations and fucking... But it seems like, I don't know, seems like it's burning itself out. That's my non-medical opinion. It's uh, it's burning itself out. Yeah, it's burning itself out. And, you know, with all that downtime, we're going to... or something. Mm Mm-hmm. (laughs) <laughs> yes. Just as he said, that's what we're going to do. Yeah. But should we uh, should we fire up this slingshot out in the backyard to do, see if we can hit some shit? Yeah, I'll see if it works. I mean, is there any closing remarks that you'd might like to make there, Kyle? Anything that you'd like to... We've had... This one's been a bit more free form. We've just kind of... That was fun, though. I think we've I think like, we covered a lot of issues. Covered a I lot think. of pop culture, a lot of current issues, got to the bottom of a I lot of stuff. I think we let people know where we stand. Yep. Definitely. Uh, no, I'm just, you know, everyone keeps staying safe. Keep having a good time. Um, we'll see you on the road when we see you on the road. And uh, stay tuned for stuff that we are working on. I don't know. And also, uh, let's talk about, as before we go, let's talk about Instrument of Death and your uh, band camp page with your photo books. Do you still have those for sale? Oh, yeah, I have a few. There's 30 left. If you want, I uh, I made a little my first little collected photo zine, uh, which was a lot of fun to make. They are available um, at instrumentofdeath.bandcamp.com slash merch. That's instrumentofdeath.bandcamp.com slash merch. And there's 30 or so left so get them get on it get them before they go they're very sick i have one actually right behind there he has to say that um anyways kyle thank you for joining me taking some time out of your extremely busy schedule yeah and uh being here and uh let's do this again in like uh three years or something yeah okay great sounds good (laughs) okay